Dun dun dun. Hi, it's Madeline again of Sister Luna Psychic Services. Today we're talking about death. Quite possibly my literal favorite card in the entire deck. Number 13. So, is number 13 lucky or is it unlucky? Depends on who you ask. I say it's lucky because death is awesome. And yeah, number 13 is also associated with the Knights Templar in some crazy ways that are fun to look into if you're a nerd like me. So I'll post that uh, link to that for you guys if you are interested. So the first thing that I need to say about this card is it does not mean you're going to actually die okay relax it is the card that when you turn it over for your querent um, they are gonna gasp dramatically from across the table or start making a, a weird face and you can just tell that they're terrified and that's not good you might be a little bit freaked out by that yourself just by their reaction how do you respond to that right but it's not that hard to make people realize that death is not literal and it can be a good thing. So first of all, the first thing that you can point out to them is that death is always followed by rebirth and that is shown on the card here with the sun. Um, and depending on the situation or the spread that you're doing, that can manifest in different ways, but it is, it's always an aspect of the action of that card. Another point on the card is the bishop and the children that death is riding toward. And the point of those being on there is that no one is exempt from death. You know, you can try to be holy or you can try to be innocent, but death can still come for you. There's no escaping him. And in regard to reading the card, that just means that this change is coming. You can try to resist it, but it won't work. It will still happen. You know? So you won't die, literally, but if this card comes up in just a general reading, it probably means that this person is going to die to their ego, die to part of their ego anyway, die to the image of yourself, you might die to your story, to your plans that you've made, right, when this change comes into your life. It can foretell the death of a situation. So if reading for a relationship and you get death, there's a chance that those two lovers will go through this transformation together and come out better on the other side of it, but that's extremely rare. It usually means the end of that relationship. Um, it can mean it's time to change your job if you're talking about finances or career with your querent. But it often is... I, at least I find when I get this card, it often means that this querent has some serious house cleaning to do in their subconscious, right? Um, also, I want to say that I think Death is a really good guy, and he's here on his white steed coming to save the day, you know? So don't be afraid of him. He wants to help you. He realizes that your situation is not serving your highest good anymore, and so he's there. And he comes and he's like, okay, let's change it. You know, and that's a good thing. You can see him coming and be like, thanks, Death, instead of running and screaming. And everyone is afraid of death, but you need to realize that eternal life as a concept is completely absurd, especially without the cyclical release of death. Everything works in cycles. You know, you can't just always be alive forever. Eventually, you need to die. And that happens on different levels, not just on the physical plane, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So, for your reading, when you pull this card, it means a change is coming, a release of something, or if, um, you know, it might feel like loss at the time. But for this change, something better is going to grow. You're making room for better things by clearing out this old junk that you don't need anymore. Death always facilitates life. 
if you think of a forest fire, all of these trees get burned and they die, but then that that heat from the fire cracks open the new pine cones, right? So, yeah. If you welcome death, the journey will be profound, it will be beautiful, and it will be a spiritual experience. It will be much easier for you than if you resist it. Resisting the death card is futile, like we saw with the bishop and the children, and it only hurts you. It doesn't help you to resist it. And I know that if you stand to lose something that you feel very attached to, um, then that can be really scary. But just trust the universe. You know, it's been doing this dance for millennia. It knows when it's time for you to let go. And to align yourself with the energy of the death card, um, first of all, I'm going to show you some different deck versions of it, and you can kind of get a more varied idea. This one is from the Wildwood, and it's got the raven. It's called the journey and the bones there. So stripping bare to your core self, to your bones, and doing your shadow work with the raven. Um, Tarot of Dreams shows a snake. That's beautiful. When you are a, a, an intentional participant in your own death and your rebirth and you shed your skin and you're renewed, right? So when you want to align with death, you can observe nature, observe the cycles of, you know, everything. That's how it all is. Even every time you eat something, acknowledge that what you're eating is dying so that you can continue to live. And eventually you will die so that those plants can live. It's really easy to find ways to align yourself with that, with that energy. And I wrote a piece pretty recently about how uh, necessary and important death is. So I'll post the link to that as well in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Love you guys. Merry meet, merry part. And marry me again. Blessed be.